Welcome back to Kinetics and Mechanisms in Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so what we're going to talk about in this video is applicable to many, many courses that you can take. We're going to talk about um, Arrhenius, who is a scientist, a physicist, chemist, whatever you want to call him, and he developed something called the Arrhenius equation, which is based on the Arrhenius theory for reactions between molecules. All right. Now, hopefully you know this by now, but if molecules want to react, they have to hit each other. They have to come in proximity and strike each other. So the Arrhenius theory about reactions um, and how, you, how they proceed is based on three things. Number one, the simplest of the facts is that molecules must collide to react. Okay. Number two, they must co collide with appropriate orientation. If you've taken organic chemistry and seen some of these reactions, uh, exactly the mechanisms of them, um, that's probably more apparent to you. And not only do they have to have the right orientation, they have to have enough energy to react okay, upon colliding. And so based on that information and some experiments, Arrhenius developed this equation where K here is the rate constant, A is what we call the Arrhenius factor. Um, and then that's multiplied times exponential negative activation energy divided by RT. When we do this in practice, we're really not going to focus much on this part of the equation. Really, it's this left side over here. Now, if you simply graph the rate constant versus temperature, it gives you a function that looks like this. And generally what happens is as you increase temperature, let me get a good color, if you increase the temperature, then the tendency is for the rate constant to increase. Now, some things we might like to know are, number one, this A value, the Arrhenius factor. We, we'd like to know that. We'd also like to know the activation energy. Now, I'll just tell you this right now. It's going to be very difficult to determine anything from this graph. All right. So there's an old saying that most people hear when they take physical chemistry, but it's applicable anywhere, biochemistry certainly. If you've done michaelis menten kinetics, you've seen lineweaver burke plots, and it, the, the saying is this. Chemistry, physics, whatever, is the pitiful attempt to force everything into a straight line. Okay, This is clearly not a straight line. So what you do when you get an equation like this is you play around with it, do various manipulations of it, until you get something that's a straight line. Now let me ask you something before we start. What is the equation of any straight line? It's y equals mx plus b. If you use Excel and you graph something that has a straight line, and you plot the trend line, you get an equation, it gives you something that looks like that, where it'll have the y and x still there, but it'll give you a value of m and a value for the y-intercept b. So somehow we want to take this equation and force it into a straight line. So I'm going to rewrite this. k is equal to a times exponential, I'm writing it like this, this is another way to do it, that's a little more convenient for at least when I do it. So that's our equation right there. Now what I'm going to do to start off is I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And to be perfectly honest, I just know to do that because I know that that's what you're supposed to do to get the result that we want. In reality, if you were really trying to look at this, you'd have to just play around with it until something cancels, things, you know, you know, multiply together until finally you get something that looks like a straight line. Um, but normally you have to play around with it if you first discovered it. Now one clue that I probably want to use natural log is I probably want to undo this exponent, or uh, this exponential function, and natural log is the inverse of that. That's how I really knew to do that. So I get natural log of k is equal to, now, when I have the natural log, and I'm going to group it like this, I'm going to say this is one part, and this is a second over here. Whenever I do this, I'm going to have the natural log of A, but it's going to be plus, because this, these are log laws, plus the natural log of the exponential of negative activation energy over RT. Okay. Now, of course, we know that natural log undoes the exponential function. So I'm left with natural log of the rate constant is equal to natural log of A plus, and then I'm going to have negative activation energy over RT. All right? Now, here's one thing I want to point your attention to. If I look at this graph over here that's clearly not a straight line, clearly my x value should be temperature. That's my independent variable. 
and my y value are dependent variables, the rate constant. So the two variables I'm really focused on are k and t. Now k, I've already taken the natural log of that, but t is sort of grouped over here with this business. So what I'm going to do is, if I look at negative activation energy over rt, I'm doing this separate over here. What I can do is I can sort of pull out negative activation energy over r, and then multiply times 1 over t. So that way the, the function of t is all by itself. Okay, I'm allowed to do that because for any set of conditions, at any temperature in other words, R is a constant, activation energy is a constant, and certainly the A is a constant. All right, T is what varies and so is rate constant. So I can group the T out of these two constants. So I'm going to rewrite this. Natural log of K of the rate constant, and I'm actually going to go ahead and put negative activation energy over R first times 1 over t plus, and then I'm going to bring this natural log of a over here. Now remember one thing. Recall that a is a constant, activation energy is a constant for these conditions, and r is a constant. The only two variables that I change in, in these experiments are temperature and my rate constant. So if I look at this like this, there's this, there's that, there's that, and there's that with the plus sign. This is essentially my y. These two are constants, and for a straight line, m, the slope, is a constant, so the quotient of two constants is also a constant. 1 over t is my x, and y intercepts a constant, so the natural log of a, which is a constant, is also a constant. So this is my y equals mx plus b. All right? So, if I did the following, let's do this. I'm going to make a plot, all right? So it looks something like this. Now I'm going to, this is not exactly what it's going to look like. In fact, this should actually be more like this, okay? Where this is going to be my vertical axis y and this is my x, okay? But in all reality, remember, the y axis is really natural log of the rate constant, and x-axis is 1 over the temperature. And that temperature, by the way, has to be in Kelvin. So this is going to be 1 over Kelvin or inverse Kelvin as units. And so when I graph this, activation energy is a positive value, r is a positive value, but since there's a negative in front of it, that means my line is going to have a negative slope. So it's going to look something like this, most likely. Okay. So that means if I, if, I give, if I get some data of temperature and rate constants and I put them in this form and graph natural log of the rate constant versus the reciprocal of the temperature, I'm going to get an equation of something like y equals, and let's just make up a number, negative 1000x, and then we're going to say minus, I don't know, let's just say 0.5, I don't know, something like that. Okay, so if you plugged some data into Excel or numbers, depending on what program you have. You plot a trend line, you get the equation, it's going to be something in this form like this. Okay? Now very quickly, I just want to go over how you deal with this data. All right, And we're going to do a, a, literally a, a concrete example in the next video. Remember my slope, which is this. Negative 1000 is equal to Remember, negative activation energy over R. So one of the values I typically want to solve for is the activation energy. So the activation energy is always going to be equal to, in this plot, it's going to be equal to negative slope times the rate constant. Okay. Another way we could say that is the absolute value of the slope times the rate constant. And I'm usually going to pick the rate constant to be the value 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin because activation energy should have energy units and that one directly has it in there to avoid confusion. So if I multiply the absolute value of the slope from my trend line times the rate constant, that value is going to be, be the activation energy in units of joules per mole. Okay, I want to find the value of A, the Arrhenius factor. Well remember my y-intercept, b, is equal to the natural log of a. So if I want to find a, what do I do? 
I need to exponentiate both sides, e to both sides, because e undoes the natural log. So if I take e to whatever the y-intercept is, that is my Arrhenius factor. Okay. So if I wanted to do this here, what is my b? Negative 0.5. So e to the negative 0.5 power, whatever that is, that is my Arrhenius factor. Okay. In the case of activation energy, this is going to be equal to negative, my slope is a thousand, or minus a thousand, so this is going to be one thousand times eight point three one four, and this whole thing is going to have units of joules per mole. Okay, I can just tell you the activation energy here is eight thousand three hundred and fourteen joules per mole, or it's going to be eight point three one four joules, kilojoules per mole. Okay, and then if you plug this into your calculator, the exponential factor, e, is going to be exponential of negative 0.5. And that value, or a, is going to be about 0 0.607. All right? And then this is our activation energy right there. So if you want to determine activation energy, or the a, the Arrhenius factor, you have to get the straight line. This plot up here really tells you nothing. It just shows you the direct... When I say direct, I mean the actual relationship between T and K. To determine these values right here, you actually have to get the relationship between natural log of K and 1 over T. Okay, But like I said, science is the pitiful attempt to force everything into a straight line. If you get everything in a straight line, then you'll be able to determine some stuff like we were here. All right. So in the next video, we're actually going to do a concrete example with some real numbers. We're going to plot the data and then get these activation energies and the Arrhenius factor. All right, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.